So today I want to talk about um, the long haul testimony, meaning that it's not just a testimony that you say and then you're able to uh, you know, convince somebody who's listening, hey, God freed me, Jesus freed me from drugs and this and that, and then they listen to it and they hear the truth and then they're saved. Uh, this is the long haul testimony. So, um, and again, I, I'm, I'm explaining this because I, they're real examples of something that I've, through living out in the Holy Spirit, here's his Holy Spirit in me is the way I'm trying to say this. Uh, at a time that I was really practicing religion and I was uh, sometimes a Pharisee myself, because it happens, uh, I think with my own family I was, um, we can turn people off and turn them away when we get too aggressive because we just know the truth and you want people to know the truth and so you get kind of aggressive. So um, I'm explaining this because I think these are good examples and this is the only way I know how to explain this example of what I'm trying to say. Living out the testimony of Jesus Christ through being in a marriage that maybe you're not happy in but you're still there, at least you're not being abused or something but you're still in the marriage and this is your living proof that you know Jesus because through that marriage, maybe eventually he'll come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior through classmates, through co-workers who see there's something different there. I have three different examples in my own life. And again, this isn't to boast in myself, but to boast in the Lord and what he's able to do. Because I'm telling you, some of these examples, especially the, the second one, when she said, I'm a Christian, I actually laughed at her because I was like, there's no way you're an atheist, you've made fun of Christianity, like, even though we were friends, and I was, op I, will, I had no problem with her being atheist, and kind of making fun of the fact that she, oh, if I ever became a Christian, I'd get the Holy Spirit, and she'd just make fun, and I just, at the time, was like, well, whatever, I didn't really, I wasn't going to tell her or chastise her or anything, but we were friends, and she was living all kinds of levels of lifestyle I didn't understand, but I still loved her as a person, and then I, in this same time period, I uh, befriended a, a Satanist who became at the time that I knew him, he became uh, an atheist. He he did renounce Satanism, uh, but most of his circle were Christians. Toward the end of our when we were getting our degree together, I remember standing in line and seeing him there uh, as we were getting our degree and thinking, his friendship circles and people he's talking to, they're Christians. I know because we would, these Christians we were talking to, he was talking to. I would serve with them at the local ele elementary school as a tutor. They were part of the programs I was in. I knew who was who he was talking to. Even though we, him, him and me, we grew apart with time because he was just an acquaintance. But when I first met him, uh, a bunch of Christians that I knew were gathered around him in the resource room, and they were challenging him because he had came out as a Satanist. And so they were giving him a lot of meat and not a lot of milk, and they were being Pharisees, and they were saying, the Bible doesn't really say this, and do you know that Satan is this, and da-da-da. And it's like, but he, he doesn't even have the ability to absorb what they were giving him. So I just stepped in and intervened and made it clear, like, we can't slam dunk on him, that's not fair. It's easy to do, but it's not fair. So he felt comfortable when we'd ride the bus together instead of sitting back of the bus with a bunch of, you know, guys who would cuss and curse. We ended up sitting together. And he felt comfortable asking me all kinds of questions, and I asked him questions. But eventually, his circle had changed, and I was impressed by this. Like, and, and I heard some things about his life that were really concerning and sad, and I realized, yeah, he had no control or power as a child, and he was taking full advantage of many times over most of his life. And, you know, the people that were mocking him and making fun of him made fun of the fact that he wore uh, a trench coat, that he looked like, you know, a school shooter, and it's like, oh, of course you're a Satanist, and they're like judging him totally based on appearance, but they were thinking they were being Christians. <laughs> So that's not, that wasn't it. They weren't doing it. Um, but I could see this transformation with time. His circle changed and he did uh, renounce Satanism and he just like made it like, oh, well, it doesn't really serve me, which is happened to be one of our conversations when I asked him, does it serve you? What does it do for you to be a Satanist? So then I have a friend who was a, a, an atheist. She had an experience and she had a very Catholic mom who kept pushing religion on her. But she had an experience where she saw her guardian angel. When I saw her waiting for the bus, you know, I was waiting for the bus, and she looked like she was lit from within, like you, like some, like her skin was glowing and just beautiful. And I was like, "What happened to you?" She's like, "Oh my gosh!" It was after Christmas break. She says, "I'm a Christian. I I believe in Jesus." And I was like, "Yeah, right. I don't believe you." Like I laughed because she'd always make jokes similar to that. And she got on the bus and she was very mad. She wouldn't sit next to me. And I thought, oh my gosh, she actually became a Christian. And during lunch, she invited me over and cried. And she said, I thought if anybody would understand what I went through, it would be you. 
I had religion at the time. And so I, I, so it's one of the things I, I greatly regret. I did pray for her and I know God heard me, you know, and I know God heard my, we had two friends in our circle that was praying for myself and another friend uh, to come to Christ and she accepted the prayers. And, uh, but I just thought, cause I was living out what I was able to do and not what I thought God can do supernaturally. And I had to like be confronted by that. That really, really looked me right in the face and said, why would you make fun of me? And then she kind of, you know, backed down and said, well, I, w I did, you know, make fun of Christians and stuff. And you just kind of always accepted me, never judged me. And, you know, but I was sitting there feeling very, like, judged, like, wow, I totally laughed in her face. She was coming to me and saying, this is what happened. And I know Jesus. And I laughed at her. So, I mean, there's not a day that I've ever thought about this encounter or going to that school that this hasn't really humbled me. The fact that I was praying, not really ex expecting to receive or thinking that anything would change. Um, the, the last thing is, uh, I, <clears throat> I'm saying uh, a lot, I don't mean to, but I work online and I work with a lot of people from the Middle East. I have a lot of imams who are equivalent to a priest or to a rabbi in the Muslim faith who are very shocked and even say that I know more about the tradition, not the Quran, but the tradition and the culture than a lot of Muslims do. Um, because some are just casual mu Muslims, you know, they're very casual, they just follow because they know they should and they live in a place where they have to. And uh, they say, you must be a Muslim. I say, no, I'm not, I'm a Christian. So I found that some will even come back and ask questions because they don't get to freely ask Christians questions. Some would ask like, do you know, uh, do you guys have three gods? So I'd have to explain that. Like water has can be vapor, water can be ice, water can be snow. It's just God in, it's one God acting in several different ways to reach us. And so that's how I explain that, even though I don't really, I don't use the word Trinity and I don't pretend to understand the mystery of the relationship between the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. I don't pretend to know that relationship between the three, but I do know that they seem to be talking or spoken of, uh, they seem to be spoken of separately, you know, so that's why I explain it this way, that we don't have three gods. And um, so they're very open and willing, and they feel comfortable asking me questions. And I found that did work for my friend who was the Satanist, and it did work for my friend who was a Christian, being accessible being open to being challenged and and I did get really challenged recently when one of my Muslim students said what do you think of the Muslim religion do you, what do you think of it and they kept asking and I kept changing the subject because I'd try not to go there but I don't believe in religion at all so religion's like the grim reaper whatever it touches with its clammy hands it tends to kill instantly so if Christianity is, is a religion like it was at the time when I was praying for somebody but not expecting to receive because I don't really know if I had a relationship, and I don't know if you have to for God to grant the request, if it's in his will, it's in his will. Um, I don't know if I had the Holy Spirit at the time. I'd like to entertain that I did. Maybe I didn't. But I was really, it was really like a, a reality check. You know, my friend looked at me and said, I can't believe you of all people wouldn't embrace this. Because I actually didn't believe it was possible. Isn't that sad? Like, it makes me so sad. But um, being the long-term testimony being somebody who i find that a lot of people i speak to from uh iraq from iran from turkey from saudi arabia a lot of these folks they their eyes are turned off because they see that i'm uh, in a from a western country they can see that i'm definitely not from their country and i probably believe things different than them and once they hear that I understand their culture and their and understand, you know, how they practice and why they practice and who they follow um, and why, they are impressed and they they open right up and they say, well, you know so much about us and our religion. Why wouldn't you follow? It, it, it puts a question mark in people's head. What do you know? What do I not know about your religion or not religion? I shouldn't use that word. It's something that they would say because. English as a second language that's all they could say this whole idea of having a real relationship with God this this true concept is something that's very unique to Christianity people entertain it in religion like it's really happening if I repeat it if I do it five times a day then God will be here with me 
but in Christianity it's the only place where it's it's like <laughs> you have the Holy Spirit you get that instant guidance you, you get instantly answered and it's just unique unto us and so I will say religion for because of course it's English as a second language for them so I would definitely not slam dunk on people who don't know English as a second language but it makes them wonder if you know so much about us what don't I know about you and your religion or your belief system what do I not know about Jesus it's opening up people's ideas and their mind and um, again because it's my job to teach uh, ESL, I'm not going to slam dunk on, dunk on people who theologically aren't able to answer back. And so this is, to me, not very, uh, it, lacks, it lacks a bit of class. So I allow them to ask me questions and um, it, it, it does impress upon them and make them want to come back and ask more questions about why don't I understand you like you understand me or at least my culture or my people. So I think there is something more to that and I think it's like a slow chiseling and when my, I myself was not really walking in the truth the whole truth I had part of the truth like oh, I'll pray but I didn't really expect anything in return which is shocking um, I had religion and even still God was moving and God confronted me with that and so this is the same thing where you can just by saying no no I fully understand you and I'm open to what you're doing and what you're saying but just know that if you ask me who I am and what I am, I'll tell you I'm a Christian and I believe in everything the Bible says and I have no shame in that. I am not ashamed. I don't need to put you down. I don't need to slam dunk on you. I don't need to make you feel less than me. I just want you to know that the reason why I'm here, why I'm here and why I have a smile is because my God is Lord. May God be with you.